Hello. What do you expect to happen if you shine a light through two very narrow slits? Most people that I ask this question to assume that you would see two narrow beams of light on the screen that you've projected it onto. But you don't. You see what's called an interference pattern. Um, so today we're going to learn about double slit interference, which is other, otherwise known as Young's double slit experiment. Um, the historical reason why this experiment was so important was that Isaac Newton used to think that light was made of little particles. Uh, Christian Huygens used to think that light was made of waves. Scientists generally trusted Isaac Newton because he was a more respected scientist. But it turned out that Huygens was right. Light is made of waves. And one of the experiments that proved this was Young's double slit experiment, where we see that when you shine light through two narrow slits, you don't get two narrow beams of light on the screen, but instead you get an interference pattern. You get what are called fringes, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. The bright fringes are where constructive interference is taking place, and the dark fringes are where destructive interference is taking place. What's happening is this. When you shine light through two slits, the light diffracts through those slits. So the light spreads out like so. This light was originally one beam of light, perhaps a laser beam. We say that the two slits are coherent sources of light because the light coming out of them has a have the, the two beams of light coming out of the two slits have the same frequency and a constant phase difference. Therefore, we call them coherent sources of light. Now, what you can see, these things here are the wave fronts, so they represent peaks. And you can see there's places where two peaks meet, for example, here and here. And there's places where two troughs meet, for example, here. In those areas, you'll get constructive interference. But in a place where a peak meets a trough, for example, over here, or over here, or over here, you'll get destructive interference. So you can see that if we put a screen at a distance from the double slits, we are going to get areas of constructive interference pattern. And we see a fringe pattern where we see a bright, fringe in the centre because of constructive interference and then a dark fringe either side of that and then a bright fringe and then a dark fringe and we get an interference pattern. And the equation for the interference pattern is W is lambda D over S where W is the fringe spacing. That's the distance between adjacent fringes we usually measure from the centre of a dark fringe to the centre of a dark fringe because that's easier to measure than the centre of a bright fringe. It's much easier to tell where the centre of a dark fringe is than telling where the centre of a bright fringe is. Lambda is the wavelength. D is the distance from the slits to the screen. And S is the distance between the slits. Now I'm going to show you a quick derivation of how this works. So let's imagine two slits. Let's call them S1 and S2. And imagine a screen a long distance away. It's important that the screen is a long distance away for the derivation that we're going to do to work. Now, imagine the central bright fringe is over here. Let's call that position O. Let's call the centre of the two slits M. And let's imagine a point over here where the two light beams from the two slits are meeting. So we have the path directly from S1 to this point and the path from S2 to this point. This point we'll call P. So the light has travelled from S1 to P, so we'll call that path S1P. And light has travelled from S2 to P, we'll call that path S2P. Now the difference between those two paths is called the path difference. 
Now imagine that that path difference is a whole number of wavelengths. That will mean that the light arriving at P from S1 and the light arriving at P from S2 will arrive in phase and there will therefore be constructive interference. So we say that if S1P minus S2P equals a whole number of wavelengths, call that M lambda, where M can be 0, 1, 2, etc. We say that there is the light arrives in phase and therefore there is constructive interference. Whereas if that path difference S1P minus S2P equals not exactly one wavelength or two wavelengths or three wavelengths, but instead half a wavelength or one and a half wavelengths or two and a half wavelengths, in that case we'll get destructive interference because the light will be arriving antiphase, exactly 180 degrees out of phase. So we call that condition m plus a half lambda, where m is 0, 1, 2, etc. In that case, we'll get the two light waves arriving in antiphase, and we'll therefore get destructive interference. So you can quickly see how we get the interference pattern that we do. In the center, where we get a bright fringe, the two paths, S1 to there and S2 to there, are exactly the same. So there is zero path difference. The two waves arrive exactly in phase and we get constructive interference. Just next to that, we're going to get a dark fringe where the light from S1 has traveled a certain path. The light from S2 has traveled exactly half a wavelength further. And therefore, at that point, we will get the two waves arriving in antiphase and we'll get destructive interference. Just beyond there, we'll get our next bright fringe and that will be where the light from S1 has traveled a certain distance. The light from S2 will have traveled exactly one wavelength more than the light from S1 and therefore will arrive in phase and you will get constructive interference again. So there we go. That's how we get constructive and destructive interference and therefore a pattern of fringes due to constructive and destructive interference along the screen. Um, just to show you what the letters in the formula are, so D is the distance from the slits to the screen, the distance from S1 to S2, from the centre of S1 to the centre of S2 is called S, and W is the fringe spacing so imagine this was the first position where there was constructive interference. This distance here would be W. So that's assuming that P is the first constructive or the first bright fringe from the center. So there's the central bright fringe at zero. And then I'm assuming that P is the first bright fringe beyond that. So that distance there would be W.